you're live. Good afternoon. I'm David Feldman, and I work at Paley Institute. Uh, after uh, working in New York City for uh, nearly 20 years, I came down here about a year and a half ago, and I thought we would spend today to talk about arthrogryposis, uh, mainly because it's changing. The treatments have really evolved in the time I've been in practice over the last 20-something years. Um, the, the treatment that we, we treat, the way we treat arthrogryposis, and the, the results that we can expect are much different. So what do we know? Well, we know arthrogryposis has many, many different forms. Most forms have no cause, have no genetic cause. And arthro just means joint, gryposis means stiff. So anyone with uh, stiff joints has something called arthrogryposis. But there can be many associated syndromes. So people have pterygium, maybe have Escobar syndrome. Uh, that's more of a genetic disorder. Anemolin myopathy, Larsen syndrome, Sheldon syndrome, Rossi syndrome, dystrophic dysplasia, Otto syndrome, and something called pterygium universalis. All these things are diseases that may look like arthrogryposis and would be called arthrogryposis, but have a specific diagnosis. As well, you're going to hear, if, you, if your child or yourself has arthrogryposis, you're going to hear many different terms. You'll hear AMC, or arthrogryposis multiplex congenita, amyoplasia, athromomyodysplasia, multifocal congenital articular rigidity. All these terms are truly just the same name for arthrogryposis. And so from an orthopedic surgeon standpoint, which is what I have, and we don't have that much time to speak, we look at the lower extremities, the upper extremities, and the spine. We are gonna leave the lower extremity, upper extremities for later. There won't be enough time to discuss them today. And they're a conversation of how to get biceps function, how to get function to be able for the child or adult to be able to eat by themselves is a different question. But the, the, real, the, 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 the topic for today will be mostly the hip, knee, and foot. And one cannot isolate the hip, the knee, and the foot and say in isolation. One has to look at them in totality. Is the hip dislocated? Is it in the joint? Is it stiff? Or does it move well? Is the knee flexed, meaning is it bent and can't straighten? Or is it straightened and can't bend? Completely different treatments. Is there a club foot, meaning is the foot turned in? Like in this picture you see on uh, this, this little baby on the right side. He has extension and a very bad club foot. Or is the foot all the way down and not turned in and can't come up, and that's called a vertical talus. So all these different topics and all these different ways of describing the hip, knee, and the foot are extremely important when we treat arthrogryposis. And we obviously try to begin when, let's say this is an adolescent who comes in, he can barely walk his knee, you can see on the right side is flexed 90 degrees, his knee on the left side is 60 degrees. But the real, you know, we try when the children are babies to, uh, to, to cast them and do non-surgical management, but eventually sometimes surgical management is indicated. So this is the young man's knee, which doesn't extend more than 80 degrees. I mean, it's 80 degrees bent. And you can see this is him uh, walking when he came in to see us a number of years ago. And you can see he's got a vertical talus on the right, I mean on the left, club foot on the right, and he can't, we can barely walk. And this is after three months at our center, and this is him walking. So, and he actually gained much more mobility than this, and was able, this was when he was ready to go home. But you can see that right now, at least he's able to walk with legs that are straight. And this is the old management. So I think past treatment, which was a decent treatment, but quite made the joints quite much stiffer than they had to be, was using these external fixators, putting these devices on the legs and slowly straightening the leg out over time. And we did get decent results, but we didn't get more motion. The, the hip, if the hip knee moved from 80 to 100, then maybe it moved from zero to 20. So we couldn't really gain more motion. We, we developed straighter knees, but they were stiff. And here he is. You can see this is almost 10 years ago or over 10 years ago. Stiff knees. But what about now? What about in 2017? So here's a young woman who's actually popularized, popularized her treatment or her grandmother has on... Uh, on the, on the web and on Facebook, really with a 90 degree flexion deformity of her, both of her knees. This is after treatment, you can see in April, and we were able to get it straight in one setting, in one operation, and the knee was straight. So if you look at these two videos, this is this young girl walking before, fully braced, really unable to walk independently, and now you have literally four months later, the child walking down the hall in her room, independently and she will gain speed and she's only wearing short braces she's not even wearing braces above her knees and in the picture to your right she can barely walk the therapist is holding her up 
and certainly the gate on the left is not functional, and the way she's walking on the right is certainly functional for her to get around, and she's swimming and doing everything, and she, you can certainly follow her journey on Facebook um, if you wish. What about extension? What about if your child or you has your knee that doesn't bend? How is that treated? Well, that also has gone from doing what's called, you know, we now do Judaic quadriceps plasties, and we're able to keep the knee moving, and we're able to treat the club foot at the same time, first by casting, and then by surgery itself to bring the foot into position. Almost always the foot in arthrogryposis will need to have some kind of surgery done to maintain its function. For certainly surgery and tenotomies, I mean little tenotomies in the office and casting is the first treatment of both the knee and the foot. And this child is now 14 and he walks independently with bending of his knees. And certainly, I, and that was him now 12 years ago. So he's 13 years old now. and. Um, and I could show videos later, but there's no time. And then we have arthrogripotic spines. So this is my, the warning sign of arthrogryposis. Children develop scoliosis with arthrogryposis, and adults do as well. But it is different, very different, than the normal scoliosis seen in idiopathic scoliosis, in the, in the form of scoliosis that is that we see in patients who are normally adolescents. So this young girl, lived in Canada, had a very severe kyphosis. They tried to extend her rods and she got even worse. And just to show what happened, this is now her jaw. She's completely fallen over her deformity and to a point where her chin is stuck to her chest. And this she's avoidable. This is, you can see, now she comes to us with unable to raise her chin off her chest, looking at the world really in, 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 in a way that is unbearable, that she really cannot see. And there were ways of fixing this, but certainly this should be avoided. So here she is when she's ready to go home. We had a little party for her after she stayed. That was her during treatment. We first had to distract her, and then we were able to treat her surgically. But the goal is to make sure that, that the arthrogryptotic spine has completed the entire spine, not just the part of the spine that perhaps you see the major curve in terms of the scoliosis, but you have to be very careful of weakness and kyphosis as well. So I, I do think this is a completely different entity than we see in all other diseases. So that was a quick summary, uh, and certainly I'll take questions uh, about scoliosis. And again, we leave upper extremity for a different day in terms of how to regain function of upper extremities. So I think I'll, I'll just take questions if anybody has any, um, and we can go from there. <clears throat> all right, first question, um, Ray Allen Lewis says, I was born with arthritis, and Dr. Kaley was able to break my fused knee. My question is, my other knee has severe arthritis, my mobility is limited, and it makes it hard to walk without hurting. Before I have a knee replacement done, are there any injections you could recommend? So it's a good question. So, you know, it depends upon how much arthritis a person has, um, whether or not you do knee replacements. But the key in arthrogryposis to be able to do a knee replacement and, and get motion is to um, is the fact that you have to do the soft tissue work, the Judaic quadriceps plasty, perhaps a shortening of the femur, to be able to do that, to be able to have the motion to get it. So in terms of biologics, we are doing biologic injections, um, alpha-2 alpha macroglobulin, um, as well as BMAC, as well as some PRP, but I don't think PRP is good for this, but certainly you know, an alpha-2 macroglobulin, Synvisc, um, and perhaps BMAC, which is a, a stem cell, you can try those, and they can try to delay, take away some of the arthritic pain people have. Um, is it different in arthrogryposis? I don't think so. Arthritis is arthritis, and there's some good results in arthritic patients and knees having those injections. We do that here, um, and uh, the problem usually is that it's not FDA approved, and therefore most insurance companies, or it is FDA approved, the insurance companies don't usually cover it. These are exp expensive injections, um, but they usually give some relief and maybe delay the, the, the knee replacement. Um, next question, uh, Lori Kennedy Carpenter asks, is there any research that you know of to find a cure for uh, AMC? So that's a great question. So I, mean, I hope everybody heard the question whether or not there's any um, research being done for the cure for arthrogryposis. So I think one has to look at the many facets of what arthrogryposis is. So for instance, I would say that in genetic forms, we're closer to saying, well, we know what the genetic defect is, for instance, in Escobar syndrome with pterygia, 
And therefore, perhaps that would be easier to cure down the road than um, what really is causing arthrogryposis in the everyday setting, where in most patients is probably an intraviral, intrauterine, meaning in the, 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 there was a virus, a viral infection that affected either the spinal cord or the nerve roots of, of the baby or of the, of the utero. And that's why it always looks worse at birth. And you can't judge it at birth, you always judge it much later. And then basically, so that would be difficult to say there's research being done to cure this disease in global. But certainly we're doing a lot of research to take each of the problems that people have with AMC and treating each problem. So I think if you took a thousand patients with AMC, probably 300 of them are different types. And that's why it would be so hard to say that there's a cure for this disease. Okay. Next question, uh, Maladat Zara asks, my husband is a patient with arthrogryposis. He was operated twice in his early age for correction of his feet, but now he is 30 and facing again the same problems. Yeah, so the question is about the feet and arthrogryposis. There's no question that, that once the child is finished growing, it should be stable. We should have a stable event, except for the arthritic part. So because joints are stiff, they can get arthritis and they can become painful. So for instance, if a child has a club foot or a vertical talus correction, they're doing well through their teens, through their 20s, it is possible when they're 30 years old that they will need some type of fusion or welding of the joint to enable them if, they're having, if, the, if the patient's having pain. And, and usually that's quite good. And again, we'll buy another 15 to 20 years and perhaps at 50 we may have to do something else. So unfortunately, yes, this is a disease that keeps on giving, but certainly this, the treated correctly, if the feet are kept on the ground, you could have painless feet flat on the ground for many years and hopefully with minimal surgery as adults if they were treated correctly in childhood. I mean, I treat both adults and children, and I certainly see the effects in adulthood of arthrogryposis. Okay, so I think we'll, 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 we'll time out for today on arthrogryposis, and certainly if anybody has questions, they can email us or write to us on Facebook. Um, if, there's a, if there's topics that people want to talk about, about this disease, I think that would be terrific. We could certainly, we'll post this online, but certainly I think that we can discuss each one of these topics. I mean, upper extremities is a big problem in, in kids, for instance, and in being unable to eat or unable to care for themselves in adults and children. And I think there's more and more being done for that as well. And I do see a lot of poor treatment. I think there's so many cure around the world, I see this. And I think there's so many ways we can make kids functional like the kids I showed you in the videos. Um, so signing off from the Paley Institute in West Palm Beach, Florida, and we'll talk to you soon.